Hi, what's up? I'm Steve, and this is going to be my SKO of this semester. Um, so I'm going to talk about service design and the Surfdesk 2020 Studio. In this studio, we have explored and examined the study of service design. When people ask me what is service design, I always don't know how to answer. If I need to give it a definition, service design is the practice of designing experiences that reach people through many different touch points and that happens over time. During the research stage, we discovered many different service design methods that are super helpful in making projects such as customer personas, experience maps, and service safari. Service safari is one of the most useful methods that our team utilized to gather information and data. So, what did I do in the Surfdesk 2020 studio? Well, I was in a group called the Cartographer. We did a taxonomy map and eventually designed a layout for the Surfdesk 2020 conference. The taxonomy map was one of the most challenging projects I have ever done, mostly because I can't understand the premises and the concept of service design. Those tools and methods were driving me crazy. We have also had many different opinions and ideas when making the map, and because of that, we only started to make the map when it's almost the due date. A couple of weeks later, we started to get into the service design 2020. It is a conference that will be held in RMIT in 2020. It required us to design the whole branding and services along with experiences for the conference. Our job is to create a layout that has maps, timetables, and other useful information inside, and it has to be a booklet. I didn't think it would work because I never seen a layout that is a booklet before. It just seems so uncomfortable and so weird that people probably is going to never carry it around. As time goes on and the code design session is coming up, we started to collect information and questionnaire answers from people. We used conversation cards in the code design sessions. We visited four different conferences to do service safari and asked people what they think about the layout. That's when we hit our first wall. We realized that people don't care about the layout at all. We started to think like the user. How can we do it so that people want to have it and even keep it? Functionality is the answer. If you want them to use it, you have got to make it useful. We started to collect all kinds of information from other design teams and try to squeeze all of them into the layout. Jumps to mid-semester review. We have already designed three different versions of the layout with different bindings and contents. One of them was just a card. The panel members gave us a lot of useful suggestions, but because they are all useful, we struggled to find a balance since some of the comments are against each other. On the design perspective, we tried to develop from the current Service Design 2020 brandings, but one day Yoko suddenly showed up and gave us all the branding guide. Where has it been all the time? Because we would save so much time on doing the brandings and visual elements. From that, everything become easier. We follow the branding guide, cooperate with other teams, and consult with Emma every week. New versions of the Lanya design kept coming out and getting rejected. Progress has never been so fast. In the end, we have come up with a Lanya design that aims to achieve three goals. Functionality, meaningfulness, and reusability. It's a booklet that has 28 pages. The front and back covers are the same and it's empty so that people can write their own name on it. Inside, it has maps, timetables, guides, and other important information in there. I have learned a lot in this studio. First of all, it's the considerations you have to put into the service designs. When I do normal designs, it's just about the visual. But in service design, you have to think about the feelings, experiences, religions, genders, dietary, and even reading orientations. 
Second of all, it's the tools and the methods that we can use to generate data and information, such as service safari and conversation cards. I think there are tools that you can not only use in service design, but in other design areas as well. Overall, this studio has been challenging and time-consuming for me, but I really enjoyed the teamwork and how every group works with each other. And the insights I have learned is going to help me a lot in my future design journey as well. So thank you to Emma and thank you to every other group that has helped me in my studio. Also thanks to my teammates Asina and Florence and that's it.